Hello, everybody. Uh, this is meeting number 16 of the Visual Tools Group, uh, a group where closure developers and users uh, discuss the emerging stack of tools for data visualization and littered programming and such. And today we will have a presentation about Calva notebooks and their integration with Porta. And we'll have both Lucas and Chris, the maintainers and creators, uh, presenting these topics. And we, we will begin with everybody telling just a little bit about themselves, and then we'll have the presentations. Uh, so um, maybe, uh, Joe, would you like to begin? Maybe tell something about yourself, your interests. Sure. Um, he hello, everyone. Um, so I, I'm not a professional developer, but I do a lot of work with data. And um, so I'm interested to use uh, see what's available for closure and see what tools I can use um, and sort of move some data analysis that I typically do in Python to closure. And um, I'm excited to hear what you've got on in store today. So thank you for organizing this. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Peter? Yes. Hello, everybody. Yeah, Hello. I'm 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 Peter. Uh, so I guess uh, my claim to fame here is um, the creator of Calva, and um, yeah, other than, than that, I'm a big uh, closure fan, and also I guess I'm not um, uh, usually using closure so much for data analysis and. And the things that often a topic um, uh, uh, for for this group, but I'm super interested in in, in the the use case and and uh, yeah, so that Lucas, and I and others in the Calva team can uh, can support uh, um, ah, using closure with Calva uh, for for. Um, data analysis and whatever you guys do. So that's that's why I'm here. Thank you so much. Um, Lucas? Hey, um, I'm Lucas and um, I'm one of the Calva maintainers. Um, I also use Clojure professionally, um, building tooling around like a custom language. Um, and yeah, I'm the one that wrote this Calva notebook thing. Um, well, I'm pointing at the monitor that you guys can't see, but we'll see later. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm hoping that uh, it's going to be useful in the um, data science thing, but that's not why I actually uh, wrote it. It's like for me, the interesting bit around it is having the execution data in line with the actual data um and seeing it in a more rich format so yeah i'll we'll talk about that later wonderful and chris uh hi yeah uh, my name is chris uh, i've been doing closure professionally now for almost three years uh and it in that time i kind of found a need to build a tool uh for like inspecting data which is portal so I've been kind of working on Portal for two years outside of um, VS Code. Uh, and then I, I built an extension for it. Uh, and then when I heard that there were notebooks, I was like, oh, this is another opportunity to kind of have another integration uh, of Portal in VS Code. So, um, but yeah, uh, I guess that wasn't really about me. But yeah, I've been, I've been doing uh, uh, Portal things for uh, two years. So that's pretty much it. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, Brian, uh, if you wish. Hello. Uh, Hello. <laughs> uh, I uh, am a professional closure developer. Uh, I work at a health tech company and I use Portal every day uh, as a part of my debugging process. Um, and I've contributed a little bit to Portal as well. So. Wonderful. So nice to meet. Are you related, maybe? If yeah, I could I'm ask. brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. So nice to meet. Thank you. 
Um, uh, I'm Danielle. I do statistics mostly and a little bit involved in organizing study groups in the closure community and a little bit of related tooling. And I'm so much interested in these projects we discussed today just because they are so much relevant to some of the workshops and study meetings we're planning. And Ben, uh, would you like to tell something? Sure. Hi, I'm Ben. Uh, I'm like a closure enthusiast, I guess. Um, and I started when I learned, started learning closure, I guess about four months ago, I was using Emacs. And once I understood how REPL driven development works, I switched to VS Code and Calva, and it's just been really, really wonderful to use and it makes writing code super fun. So thank you to Peter and Lucas and Chris as well. I just started using Portal. So I'm excited to be here and learn more. Thanks. Beautiful. Thank you so much, everybody. Then I guess we could begin with the presentations, right? Is it good? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so like, um, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the motivation um, behind them, because um, they're coming from a bit of a different perspective than uh, a lot of the other notebook toolings. Um, because like usually notebooks are mostly built for data scientists and like play around with stuff and visualize it and whatever. Um, but since I'm not a data scientist, um, I like I care about the community a little bit, but I don't use that stuff myself in that context. Um, I'm more interested in seeing, like I said earlier, the um, the results of my executions. Um, in a more rich format, like the REPL is really nice and like it's nice to see the data, but like I can't do extra stuff with it. Like I can't show it as a table, I can't show it as a graph, I can't whatever. Like uh, there are a lot of uh, extra stuff. Plus, uh, the inline way of showing it in Visual Studio Code is pretty limited. We can like show one line or maybe two, um, which is really annoying. Um, like we just don't have the access into the Visual Studio um, API to do it. So um, notebooks um, is a way around that uh, for me, at least, um, where I can basically show anything I want in between two lines of closure code. Um, and the um, way we build the notebooks is also a little bit different from um, other namespace based notebook thingies that we have in closure, um, like clerk or whatever, um, where it's usually like in something like clerk, you would like have your namespace and then a bunch of things that actually execute. Um, but when I work, I can't like put executing stuff into my namespace, right? Um, other devs would kill me on the project. Um, it's mostly like, here's the, a dev, here's a dev, here's a dev and here's a dev and whatever. And um, then I'm done. Now I would need like another namespace to like have something to run in a notebook. Um, which is kind of annoying, right? Because uh, I want to also see the difference. Um, so the way we do this in Calva and uh, the, um, in the Calva notebooks is really nice where we can have like already the rich uh, comments at the end and we can show those as extra stuff in notebooks. Yes, Peter. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just uh, curious about what you said that with, because uh, I'm not uh, notebook user uh other than the calva notebooks uh but you said this namespace that put executing stuff in them can, can you let's uh, like uh that doesn't mean anything to me can you can you mm -hmm. elaborate a bit on that yeah um like at least like i don't use uh, something like lurk very much either i'm just like going from the examples and stuff i see online from other people using it but it's, it usually looks like well, I'm going to like define a little bit of data, then I'm going to run a function on it in the same namespace, then I'm going to run another function, whatever. But if I now put this namespace into my uh, library or my project or whatever, it's going to run this code when the namespace gets loaded, right? Because like it's actually executing functions. And like I can't. So you're saying that I don't... It's, it's not in the rich comment, right? It's, exactly, it's actually exactly. when you load the namespace stuff. But okay, I see what it means. Yes, yeah, stuff happens. Yeah. And that's nice for notebooks, um, but that's not great in a normal project. 
So my idea was like, I want to use normal closure files that I use at work or like in my open source project or whatever, which is like just a completely normal namespace and have some way of seeing that as a notebook instead of having namespaces, which like, sure, they're kind of normal namespaces, but they are still a little bit special because you've got like actually executing stuff in there other than uh, defines. Um, anyway, enough talking. I think I uh, can show you a little bit of that. Um, and maybe then it will also be a little bit clearer. Let me find the correct desktop to share. This looks good. Um, cool. Uh, yeah. Showing my Zoom thing was exactly what I wanted. Um, <laughs> uh, is this large enough for you guys? It would be good exactly. to zoom in. Uh, yeah, I think zoom in would, would help for those. I don't know uh, if I can zoom, but I can oh. increase the font size. Of it, oh, yeah, thanks. Probably. Hey, you can zoom in everything. I can zoom? How do I zoom? I didn't hear you. Is it command plus or control plus or something like that? Command oh, plus. Okay. Well, it's not this one. And also not this, not this. Ah, yes. Ah, that was much maybe. Um, yeah, that looks fine, I guess. Um, cool. Anyway, this is a Calva environment. Um, I've got like the uh, a debug version running right now, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and this is kind of a normal project. This is our testing data uh, for Calva itself. Um, but again, this doesn't really matter. Um, the idea being, we just have a normal closure project. This is a Debs Eden project with a bunch of stuff. Um, and you can just connect to the REPL you do with like you like you usually develop and then you've got like your normal files. Well, I mean, you probably don't write your code as bad as we do in our testing environment, but um, maybe you do, who knows. Um, but as you can see in here, this is just a normal namespace. And the things that I meant with like executing code are like this foo thing. Um, you wouldn't usually have that in a namespace, right? Um, because like you don't want this to run on startup. You want this, like maybe you do, but like usually you don't. Um, so you would have this in comments. But other than that, that's a normal namespace, right? And a normal closure file, there's nothing special in here. And the idea being now that you can just right, right click on this thing, say open with, and instead of the normal text editor, you just select closure notebooks, and then you get this thing, which is like, the same content, right? Um, other than every single top level thing, like this is, these are the top level things, getting a code block. And the comments being shown is like marked down in here. Like this feature is not done yet, um, but like it's normally shown as normal uh, text. Anyway, uh, now you can run these things. They are run like, your code normally runs and they show you the result underneath. As you can see, these are not very interesting. The initial bits are um, the metadata on those devs, um, which like probably don't interest you that much. And then it's just a var name, right? Um, when you run devs. Um, the interesting bits is running code that actually has a result. When you do this, well, doesn't have very much of a result because it's just print in. Um, but hover map um, does, and it's pretty big. Can I still scroll? Yeah. Um, it's a pretty big result, but at least I can get it in line. If I do the same thing in here and execute this, I get all of this, which is like, yeah, sure. Like I can see a tiny bit of that, but we can't see the whole thing and I want to like see the whole thing. And now I would have to go into the REPL and look at that. And then there's like, it's printed weirdly and whatever. Um, you can set all that, that up, but I'd like to see the result right next to the thing, right? Um, and 
in here, we have the possibility to actually show that. Um, yeah, anyway, we can run a bunch of other stuff, um, which is not super interesting. The interesting bit is uh, down here. You can see there's like this meta test and 42 and whatever. Um, and these are actually inside a rich comment. They're not inside uh, the inside the namespace itself, they're in the comment, but they're still shown as a top level thing, which is really nice because you can now like execute them one uh, and see every single result of them um, without having to do the thing, uh, putting them into the namespace itself. So you can now have rich comments in your code and like do, um, the documentation in there or whatever, um, and we're already used to having this. There's already a bit of portal preview here, as you can see. Um, Chris is gonna show you like how this looks uh, when you run it in portal, but probably not this exact example, um, but something similar. And um, yeah, uh, as I said, the idea behind the whole thing is that you can just like take any normal closure code. You don't do anything special. You don't even have to, you don't even need to install anything. All you have to have is like Calva installed, right click on the thing and say, open with closure notebooks. We can probably give you some hotkey at some point, um, which is gonna make it a little bit easier. And then you can use this like a normal, like a notebook in clerk or whatever. Um, and get the stuff and run all and the output and whatever. Um, you can even change the way you see the, uh, the output and show it as markdown or stuff. Um, anyway, that's already mostly what the notebooks do. The idea is they're not supposed to be like super crazy and have their own features. Um, they're supposed to interact with other tools um, or like with your code, but also not be in the way so you don't have to do anything crazy. Uh, yes, Peter, sorry. I didn't see that. No, no problem. I just raised my hand. Uh, yeah, so I got interested in you said you could show it in some other ways. You had Markdown there. Yes. And so I'm, I'm guessing uh, that it's, it's possible to have other viewers there. Like you, you mentioned before that that the regular uh, editor um, can show tab tables and stuff like that. So yes. is that possible to do here? Yes, um, the, uh, currently uh, these are the three things I put in um, because I'm kind of lazy and I don't want to redo the work that other people already did. So I'm gonna just like tell Chris to like integrate with that and he's gonna like do all the hard lifting. And I'm just gonna sit back and uh, uh, pretend it's all mine. And um, I can show a tiny preview. I can switch, well, that's not super interesting. <laughs> uh, let's go here, run this. You can see this as text right now. And I can say change presentation. I could show this HTML. I actually put that in and in theory, you watch a YouTube video in here um, if you wanted to. Um, I, can't for some reason, um, but I can also change this X application Eden. Um, and, oh, I seem to not have portal installed in here. Anyway, um, the idea being that anybody can write a renderer as its own thing um, for VS Code that says, well, I understand this X application slash Eden thing. And then, they can show their own viewer in here. Um, so like portals stuff. Oh no, this is actually already running a portal now that I'm seeing this. Yeah, this is already portal stuff. Well, this is not. I think there is HTML. Ah, there. yeah, there HTML. it is. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, we are already like sending this to portal and we're doing this by just having portal installed. But uh, Chris is gonna talk more about this. Um, but we could have like a bunch of our own viewers in here. I just don't really see the point um, when it's so easy to like integrate with somebody else's stuff. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, uh, the wheel here. 
And, oh, um, I totally agree. Yeah. Why is this this long? Anyway, um, but I think like I'm happy with uh, that uh, like having shown this uh, bits and like having talked about the philosophy behind this thing, where like we don't want these namespaces to be special. We want to display them in a special way, but we don't want you to do anything to get this superpower, basically. Um, I can probably stop sharing some, right? Yeah. So, so I have another question there. Because uh, sure. I know that you and I have been uh, working with this and trying pretty hard to make sure that we serialize uh, the notebook uh, in, in the right way so so that you should be able to, you can edit it from both ways, right? Yes. So, um, so it, it, it should be very, um, what do I say? So it, it's not like you can just edit it in as a text and then show it mm -hmm. as a notebook. You should be able to work from both sides and, yes. uh, and things should really stay consistent and uh, yeah. yeah. We probably have some bugs in there. Uh, we've been decently careful yes. and uh, have a lot of test cases, um, but there's probably a few ways where like, when you save in the notebook, there's gonna be like a tiny bit different. Uh, the, it's mostly around white space usually um, when saving uh, to a closure file. Um, but if it comes out differently, it's a bug and we can fix that. Um, but most of the craziness that you can do um, should come out fine. Um, the one thing that's like still a major thing that's missing in the notebooks themselves is integration into um, into Clojure LSP. So you don't get all the special tooling like find reference or um, autocompletes or whatever. Uh, the, like that's being actively worked on and like it should hopefully arrive uh, soonish trademark. Um, but um, other than that, like every other Calva thing is working in there, um, which is really nice. And yeah, I'm usually still writing my stuff in a normal text editor. And then if I want to see the stuff executed, I'm gonna switch to the notebooks. But um, yeah, you could also just write in notebooks if you wanted to. Yeah, that's a great. There was a uh, discussion on Twitter, maybe it was yesterday, or like uh, someone highlighted this uh, that it that it is a bit tricky uh, with just a regular text file and regular repo output to to work when the data gets uh, big. It's it's hard to work with it, and and people are throwing in like. Uh, portal and and everything uh, uh in there uh and this i'm super interested in hearing what chris says about that but but it looks really awesome yes if, if you have portal views even in that notebook it's uh i don't know it seems like it's there's something super interesting for this beginner use case as well or is it just like like my Maria uh, Cloud, Maria DB thing. Uh, it's super easy, like in the web uh, browser, to to play around with closure, uh, that, and that's fine. But somehow it's even more powerful if you do it in your editor, uh, and it's that, that that's how you're going to work. And I can definitely see myself actually work in this in this way. Like it's it's super interactive. Yeah, I usually like have portal just open in another monitor and like always tap a bunch of stuff over there. But then you've got like 50 values uh, on the different screen and it's difficult to jump in between values, right? Um, and I'm already having the, my text editors displaying my code, right? And I'm jumping between different values in the code. And now I'm sending them, tapping them over. And now I need to find them in portal and whatever. It's nice when I have the notebook where the value is right next to the actual content of the value, but I'm still getting the full rich interaction with the actual content and not just, well, here's a bunch of text that usually isn't, doesn't fit on your screen because it's some huge hash map or whatever. Uh, yeah, um, what's your name? Sorry, uh, Ben. 
Yeah. Hi, I'm just wondering, is is there a way to like write defs in the notebook and then export them to a closure file? Or would you just like save the notebook and then copy and paste or something? You that like the notebook, the idea is it's just a normal closure file. Um, oh, okay. Like you have with your just playing basically a normal closure file as a notebook. Um, but when you hit save, it's just like a, it's just saving to the same file. Like I initially showed the namespace as a text editor, right? And then opened it in a notebook. If I had changed a bunch of stuff and hit save, it would have saved to the same file and hopefully not destroyed any stuff with like a uh, white space or whatever. Um, so you, and you can just create a new cell as well um, to have a new def on or have two defs in the same cell works as well. It's not like the output is not as pretty, but like the saving of it uh, would work. Yeah, if there's no more questions from our part of it, and we can still like do questions afterwards, that's no problem. Um, I would give the stick to uh, Chris. Yeah, I, I can take it from here. So let me share my screen. Wonderful. And by the way, Chris, we we have a lot of time. So if you find it right, it could be a good time for other updates about Portal or anything you you wish oh, we to can tell about. Oh well, yeah, we want an exclusive here, please. Okay. Well, wait, so you guys can see VS Code right now then? Okay, the little green thing is it showing up, so I'm not sure. Um, okay. But yeah, um, I'll, I'll share some updates uh, about um, Portal if, 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 if there's time. But uh, yeah, so I think the, the really nice um, thing about this setup is that you only have to do two things. Install the Calva extension, install the Portal extension in VS Code, and then you're like good to go. There's there's no other setup required. I think that can kind of be like an issue, especially for newer users is coming in. They're like, okay, I need to install this and I have to connect it to that. And then I'm getting errors and I don't know what to do. So hopefully what this does is give them like a very streamlined way to get their environment set up. Uh, but yeah, so kind of like um, uh, Luke's presentation, I have a closure notebook. I have a little helper here that lets me set the default viewer. And then you can kind of see that I'm using that in a few places, right? But this is kind of uninteresting by itself. But what you can do, like Lucas said, you can do open with um, and open as a closure notebook. Now you can see that I have all these blocks and like kind of like similarly with uh, what Lucas said, you can just start to evaluate. So kind of here's here's like a, the, a first example of kind of, uh, let me show you what it would look like with the default presentation or I guess the text plane presentation, right? Which like, it's kind of readable, but it's like not structured in a nice way. And I'm like, well, I have a viewer in portal exactly for this type of data. So if I change it back to portal here, um, and it, uh, the really interesting thing is there's two levels of dispatch. There's like, you can choose the presentation from the VS code side, but then also portal has a bunch of pr presentation options as well. So on the right over here, you can see that there's different ways. So maybe a more familiar way to see this data would be pretty print, right? So people are kind of very used to this way of looking at data. Uh, then there's also the tree viewer, which is kind of good for really nested data uh, that you kind of want to see more of it at once. And then there's like the default inspector, which is what usually uh, I, I like to use by default. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you can kind of see all the different data types it supports. Uh, a, a lot of, uh, the closure idioms, sorry, not closure, the portal UI idioms are kind of brought over into the medium of notebooks. So you can kind of collapse and expand it still with space. Uh, you can open up the command menu uh, and choose for um, toggle expand, which is what I was doing, which is space or E. So you can you can still like select data, run, run commands. I'm not sure who's familiar with how much of stuff you can do within um, portal. So I'm kind of demoing a little bit of the stuff you can do in, in, in Portal, right? Uh, but yeah, so yeah, part of that is running commands. Sorry, go. No, I just, uh, um, please um, demo Portal as well, because uh, I'm yeah. not super familiar with it, so that's great. Yeah, OK, OK, good. So then, yeah, I'll, I'll keep. Uh... So yeah, you, you can expand and collapse stuff. You, you can select different elements. If you double click, you kind of like focus, navigate into it. So like I can double click that. And then you could, you have history. 
Um, so th th this is a feature that has existed in, in, in Portal for a long time. And I kind of have like an implementation for it here uh, for notebooks. I'm not sure if I'll keep it. It, it seems to work relatively well. It's kind of nice to be able to be like, let me focus in on this. Uh, but it, it, it kind of gives you like a very quick and dirty way to kind of go from your code evaluation. And then just like, we actually let me do this other thing really quickly with the data selected in hand because sometimes you'll have like a big piece of data and I can come up here and change the code to select it or I can literally just click it and then click this uh, <clears throat> is it yeah it's and then I can do um, let's see vector so I have two elements in my hand and I call vector well they should put them in a vector so I can I can still have access to all of the stuff that I'm used to from my um, full-fledged portal environment and my uh, notebook environment kind of explore stuff. Um, yeah, let's see what else. Uh, if, if you if you kind of want to take this data into like a full fledged portal UI, there's this button over here, which is like, it looks like an external link button. I don't know if you can see it. If you if you click that, it'll, it'll take what you have selected and open up portal itself. Since you have the portal extension installed, it can say, okay, just focus in on this. So then you can use stuff like filtering. Um, you can use, uh, actually, that's probably the main thing that I, I don't have over here because I didn't know how I wanted to do it but you kind of get the more full-fledged UI. And it's based on what you have selected as well. So if I just select one and I click open, it'll just select, it'll just open up that value, which is nice, right? Because sometimes you want to be like, take this over here, let me do some other stuff with it. Uh, that's kind of the thought process behind the, um, the UX. And I can close these. Let's see, uh, I can go back, forward, just like you would normally do. Uh, Let's see, let, let, um, let's go through some more of the interesting viewers. So let's, is this one interesting? It's, it's kind of interesting. It, it kind of demonstrates some of the uh, special viewers that Portal has. So Portal has like, like general purpose viewers for like maps and stuff, but then some data structures you get have semantics. So like exceptions datafy a certain way and I can match that based on a spec and then be like, oh, this is a this is an exception. Let me render it in a better way. So let me just like double click this real quick. So the, the, this is what um, exceptions look like in in uh, Portal. And what's really nice is if you use something like EX Info, you can supply it data, right? Arbitrary data. And what happens is that you can like grab onto that data within the Portal uh, exception viewer, right? Because Data can contain more data, can contain more data, right? So it's it's really nice to be able to like shove some random data in your exception and toss it and then view it in portal as data. It's, it's supposed to like as a string that gets serializes uh, Eden and you're not quite sure if it got pretty printed, but it doesn't kind of work exactly with its parent pretty printer. So anyway, it's nice when it's all just data. <laughs> so that's exceptions. Um, there, there's another thing that I commonly do with dates is like, you'll, you'll have an instant, but you're like, when was that? So this is like a little helper I have, which is like relative time. So you guys can see that I generated this timestamp 49, you know, minutes ago. Um, what else? And there's nothing really interesting here outside of that. I guess there's some other cool commands you can run that maybe people aren't familiar with, like select keys is kind of cool. So if I do select keys, oh wait, there's a hand. Sorry, did you want to ask a question? Um, was it me? My hand? Oh, yeah, I, I it was this boy. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Was, uh, Sorry. So happy to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw a hand, but I was like, oh wait, oops. Okay, so yeah, you can run you can run select keys on some data. Uh, so I want to select this, this, and this, and then I click enter, and now from that full fledged map, I've selected those values. So there's this, like that UI from the full fledged portal has created over to like notebooks, um, and then you can go back to like where you were. Um, and then you can also do another one, just so she's like, there's a cool closure function you can run. And it's the same thing where I want to, I want to just so show those two, so I'll only end up with ratio. Uh, and I can go back and then forward, right? So a lot of the UI or the UX paradigms are, I, I try to make them fit in here. Um, what else? Let's do this one. So uh, portal supports like special strings. So it knows that if you have this string format, it's a color. So it'll render the color. It's a nice little helper. Um, let's see, uh, diff. So there's like a diff viewer in, in portal, which will take data that's like in a list of things and it'll diff them like two by two as it goes through them. So let me show you the underlying data for this really quickly. 
um, by going to the inspector. And so I have this like vector of values and I've set metadata on it to say, hey, make the default viewer the diff viewer. And the semantics are take this value, take this value and like diff them. Oh, I guess I can't. So if I do that and I go to the diff viewer, this is what it looks like. Uh, and it's showing you that um, this key was removed. This value was changed. It changed from this to this. Um, this was removed, this was added, right? Um, <clears throat> so I, I, I like this, especially for like UI states. So I'll, I'll usually like tap a bunch of UI states. I'll have like state one, state two, state three. And then I can diff them all to be like what has changed through all my like state transitions essentially. So that's kind of what I like to use this, this viewer for. Um, let's see, uh, the, the, there, there's some uh, other viewers that I built based on like use cases that I've had. So usually um, when you're working with programs, they have standard output and standard error as like targets for output. Uh, so here's like this thing I call the prepl viewer because it, it's leveraging like the format of um, prepl, which if like, let me take that data and put it in a table. <clears throat> And now you kind of have a sense of what the actual underlying data structure looks like. It's a, a map. Well, I guess let me go to pprint really quickly. I'll start there, right? It's just a, a list of maps where there's a val and a tag. Uh, but I like to view that as a table just because it's like, um, <clears throat> it's nicely formatted, right? But so here are all the tags. There's out, which usually means standard out, and then the string that represents that. So you can have, you can kind of have an interlacing of standard out and standard error. Uh, which I, I just found this useful for like portals out, uh, build output as well. So I can output like rich stuff from my build. But yeah, it looks like this. Um, and then you can toggle and expand it. So uh, there, there's some other data structures uh, that are interesting that <clears throat> I use daily, which is like logs. So logs are another common type of thing that you interact with, um, which is like, here's a thing that happened and when, you know, here's what you got. So the, let me show you the, the table viewer for the same data. This is what it looks like, right? You have all this information. You have a time, you have a runtime, which is kind of cool. I use that to like show this icon to be like, hey, this, this log came from this runtime. And it's just a matter of putting this keyword in it, right? This came from a closure runtime, a closure script runtime, a babashka runtime. Oh, sorry, you have a question? Oh, I can't, I think you're muted. Uh, I'm muted, yeah, sorry. Um, I just wanted to comment that I really like the log output, um, mostly because it's putting in where this thing is coming from. I'm like, I have the bad habit of littering my code base with tabs while I'm doing something really big. And then I'm like, well, where is this? Like, I've got like a million things coming now. And I want to get rid of some of them, and I don't know what this one is. And then you start tapping stuff by like putting it into a vector and having a string at the beginning, yeah. just to like still remember where it's coming from or whatever. And that's really not great interaction, right? And um, especially because tap also only takes one value, um, so you can't even just put a string and the thing in there. You need to now wrap it in a um, vector, and then. The vector is also not maybe not expanded initially and whatever. Like there's a bunch of annoying things. And if you just like log it with a portal, you get a way nicer interaction with it. And you also know where it's actually coming from. So it's easy to like remove it or like find the value you're looking for in a, when you're tapping a lot of stuff and whatever. Yeah, so, yeah it's I really, really easy to overwhelm one. yourself. Yeah. Oh, but so I want like the the like thing that I think that uh, I want to clarify too is that like um, the there's like nothing special here. Like if I go and I click on this and I do like pprint, you can see that this is any any tool, any piece of code that can produce this data um, can use this viewer, which is portal viewer log, right? Any any so code that I write, code that you write code that other people wrote that you integrated with to dump stuff into portal, all of us can play the game as long as we agree on this shape. And it's a very easy shape to match to. So uh, in the documentation, um, there's like a mapping for this for timbre, timbre, I'm not sure how you say it. I I've heard many pronunciations, right? But uh, there is like um, cl um, closure logging tools that have mappings to this data structure and you can leverage those. So what, what I do at work is, um, we have our um, 
like logging piped to portal as like a specific instance that instance that isn't taps. And it, it, it's, it's mapping both the closure and closure script logs. So you can kind of see an interlacing of the back end did this, the front end did this, the back end did this, the front end did this, um, because you, you have access to the runtime, but it's like all the data for it too. And like the UI isn't doing that on purpose and the back end isn't like, it's all just being funneled through uh, the like logging stuff. And we, 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 we can all play this game of, if you have the right data, you can use the right, this viewer. But like I was showing here, you can also change it, right? You can you say, no, I, I, I don't want to see it this way right now. I want to see it this way right now. I want to see it as a, as a table and I give a better sense of uh, what, it, uh, what, what it looks like. And again, right, I showed you the, the relative viewer. So I should be able to click this instant and I should be able to change it to relative time. So this was 16 years ago. Uh, if you if you look at it, actually, I think that's the timestamp for the first commit for closure. If I go back to Inspector, right, it's 2006. So it's a long time. <laughs> um, so here's another interesting viewer, uh, which it will take the data structure and render it as hiccup via reagent. So if I show you what this looks like as a tree down here, so this data right here, which I'm using the, the tree viewer to display, if you use the hiccup viewer to display would look like this. And there's, the, there's this cheat code. It's not quite hiccup, it's like a superset of hiccup in that you can go from normal DOM to portal inspector viewer stuff. So there's like a recursion happening here where you're going from data, rendering it as hiccup and then date and then rendering data as data again. So if you if ever you want to be like, okay, this is actually data, please just render it using any of the portal viewers that you have available. You can just put a keyword there and then render it. So, and what's really nice is then you can, in your hiccup output, you can select it and then change stuff like pretty print or uh, disoche, right? We saw that trick. All those things continue to work because you kind of went back into the world of, of data and portal can like take you from there to wherever you want to go. You can select things, uh, you can open them up and then and do like all the things work. <laughs> um, so th th this is really nice because what I'll do is I'll like use DOM or I'll use hiccup for layout and then I'll put data in the spots. So like for portal itself, I have like a dashboard viewer where I have like um, um, some layout flexbox stuff, but inside of it, it's just like data viewers for tables and stuff. Um, okay, so that's the tree viewer. I don't know how much time we have left. <laughs> Hopefully enough. Um, yeah, we have, have a lot of time. Of time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, you... um, uh, yeah, so so uh, this, um, you are blowing my mind uh, all over here, but this hiccup viewer you have here, uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm working in a project where we have both hiccup, uh, but we also have, um, an AST of the DOM or the HTML uh, at some, some point. So could I write a, a viewer for, uh, for, for that AST directly here, or would I have to turn it into hiccup first and, and then view it to, um, to have I would this say, kind of... Well, so if you have like an AST, is it like super recursive, like data structure? Um, I would just use the tree viewer. Uh, I use this one a lot for like, so like at, at, in my job, we have a lot of like hiccup HDSLs that aren't hiccup, right? But they're inspired by hiccup. They're like a little, like a tiny logic language with ands and ors and other keywords. And I'll just, I'll usually dump it into the tree viewer because they tend to be very nested. Um, and that, that'll be usually like my first thing. Um, I, I would use, but like, but let's say- What I was interested in here is because the AST is actually like, um, I'm 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 parsing HTML and then turning oh, okay. that in, in, into hiccup uh, to show it uh, like uh, to the user, but but in, at first I have it uh, as an AST, and if I could view it there uh, like rendered as HTML like you do here, already at the AST like level, uh, so so that would like fire up my workflow something uh, yeah. Gotcha. oh yeah so, so yeah if it's if it's data that's like 
unknown to Portal, you'd, you'd have to write a viewer to it, or you'd have to transform it yeah, into something yeah, I'm like ready to write a viewer. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have documentation mm -hmm. that I'm writing for ex extensibility. It would be mm -hmm. okay. This is like a, another limitation of the in notebook integration is that not all of the features that are available in like full fledged portal are available here. And one of those is extensibility. So you would write your extension on like full fledged portal, but you won't, you won't be able to use it here yet. Right. That's like potentially future work. Um, cause I just, I'm not sure how I want to do it yet, but right. Cause this is a different environment and it's like loaded a little bit differently. So there's like subtleties to that. Yeah. But in my case, I can certainly fire up the, like the full, yeah. uh, okay. full portal to have this. Yeah. So it's, yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. That makes sense. Um, let's see. So there's the hiccup viewer, the tree viewer, um, this markdown viewer, which isn't really as, as useful because you can already add markdown in a notebook. But if you had a string that you wanted to render as, as markdown, so here's the portal readme rendered as a markdown. Right. It's just the entire readme. <laughs> and you, but you can like select it, you can expand. Oh, that's a little big. You can collapse it. You can, um, change it, like you can view the string for it, you can view it as text. Text, that's like another viewer that's kind of nice to have, is like, take this string, but let me render it as text. Because usually text might have some white space. So here's the actual like markdown source for it. Um, and oh yeah, so like, right, the, there's, the, the way to change the viewer is you like click the thing you want to change the viewer for, you go up here and then you have this like list of things to change it, or you can use this command, um, Right here called so what is it viewer um, select viewer which is v so if you like click it and you do v it'll pop this up and then you can filter quickly for um, the thing you want so I wanted like inspector so and then you can again click on this and expand and collapse it with space or e so hopefully there's like a like once you learn something it's useful in more than one context. That's usually like uh, how Portal tries to structure its UX. It's like teach you a thing once and then let you leverage it as much as possible. So one of those is expanding collapse. Um, here's the exception viewer again, uh, which we don't need to go through because I already went through, but it's nice, right? Because you can have data in it. Uh, the test report viewer is kind of something I've been uh, working on slash using for a bit, which is like, so when you run tests, um, closure will generate this type of data for you. Let me go to pprint first. And this is what it looks like. There's like a vector of maps and they represent like the, um, oh, do you, sorry, do you, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, sorry. I know we're actually, you want to talk about notebooks, but um, I just remembered while you were playing with it, um, does portal actually have a expand all command? Because I've, um, often not kind yet. of, or at least like expand all children, uh, which would be even more useful. You know what I mean? I yeah, often no, run into um, deeply nested stuff, and then it's a bit annoying. But uh, yeah, no. So I haven't, I haven't um, done that because usually what I would say is like if you have something that's super nested, you and you want to see a lot more of it at once. I'd say try the tree viewer, right? Because mm -hmm. then you can kind of get a better sense of it all. Because that's that's the big mm -hmm. distinction between the default inspector and the tree viewer is when you want to see more stuff at once. Um, but I don't know if that's a good answer for a lot of people. Like maybe that's, um, where is it? Yeah, I think I it's know. nice a lot of the time, but like if you specifically want to see it in in the viewer that you need for like some sub stuff, right? It's not super helpful to like have it in a tree um, because like then yeah, like everything is in the tree. You can't have like bits of it be in different kinds of viewers. Yeah. Um, so it would, it would be nice to just have a command like expand all children, like don't expand everything, of course, because like uh, yeah. one of the nice things about Portal is that it's also like being able to lazy load stuff and yes. like not explode to your thing um, and then would destroy it, but like expand children like and you kind of need to know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, no, I could definitely see like how that could be very useful. Oh. So st stuff to look into, <laughs> but it's it's a uh, good feedback there. Okay, uh, but yeah, so um, the test report viewer takes the data that you get, and well, we'll there's like a, a, a common theme here, which is that like like there's a lot of sources of data in your like development lifecycle, whether it's like standard A or standard out from processes or um, log data or um, test data. 
one of the things I've really been trying to do is like taking data that already exists and that's everywhere and like just having a little bit nicer way of viewing it. So this is an example of like taking the test output and kind of giving you a, a way to visualize it um, a little bit nicer. Because, right, so this is what it looks like as the inspector and then here's what it looks like as a test report. And you can kind of go through and you can see like, okay, so this failed, this succeeded, why did this fail? It failed because um, zero is not equal to one, but maybe it was a larger data structure and you wanted to use a different viewer like the diff viewer. So that's kind of nice to be able to like diff your test output uh, optionally based on like whether or not it makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. And I, I wanted to throw one more thing is like, which is there's like, there is Vega support too. So like if I come over here, so you usually a lot of people get leverage from doing um, stuff with Vega and Vega Lite to render charts and stuff. So if I go to the tree viewer, you'll see that this is a Vega data structure, um, which has its own like semantics and everything like that. So you like have to lean into the ecosystem to kind of get the leverage. But once you do, then you can build out all these things. And then if you're emitting these data structures, you can send them to portal and then portal will send them to uh, Vega. Uh, I think there is some issues here that I have to fix, but you can view charts and stuff. So th that's kind of the more data science-y. Like it's, it's weird because portal is like a data visualization tool, but not so much as in the like traditional sense of data visualization. There's like a lot of dev specific viewers here, right? <laughs> Um, but you can, we can still use other things like Vega and Vega Lite with everything, right? Um, so I think that's pretty much all the demo I had. Yeah, those, those were all the interesting viewers. Yeah, Mike, I think uh, this like, is amazing stuff, Chris. This is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's actually a really smart to have like viewers for like our common stuff and leverage the viewers that data scientists already use for the other stuff, right? Because like, I mean, you're not in that space. So like, yeah, sure, you can sit down and like write a bunch of stuff for other people, um, but you're gonna get it wrong a little bit. Plus you won't be motivated by like using it yourself and whatever. And um, the same way I'm doing like the Calva notebooks where it's like, I want them for myself uh, uh, because I wanna like look at the data in line with my actual code. Um, but it's nice that I can give the data science community something back um, by having like extension points in there where it's like, well, they they know what they want to do. So they can put a viewer in there the way they want to do it. Um, I'm just like giving the infrastructure to do it, right? Um, and Portal does the same thing with like Vega um, and you can go as crazy as you want, right? Um, and put HTML in there or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So you're not like limited by what portal can display. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. um, I think uh, you also wanted to show the um, oh. the integration bit. Yeah. So right, uh, actually getting this as as a notebook, uh, implement like as a render, like what one, one of these when you do change presentation, right? Uh, registering portal as a presenter for this was, was actually not that much work. Uh, if I take a look at the implementation, which is, I think you go to, um, and th th this is for people who are curious about how they can implement their own present, uh, pre presenting things. But yeah, if I go to the package JSON, no, that's the package lock, that's not useful. JSON inside of VS Code you add a notebook render section under your contributes and you say for this mind type which is what lucas was saying earlier right at x application eden uh which means you're going to get a string of eden and you can do whatever you want with it um and what i say is hey call this um you know the portal eden render and then the actual implementation for this looks like <clears throat> um which extent i think if i do notebook there you go. So this is what the actual, this is the entire implementation of the integration. Everything else is like portal specifics. This is the VS code specific bits is you, um, you have these two functions, activate and reload. And uh, when, <clears throat> what you do is your activate function returns this uh, JavaScript object that has render output item. And all I do is I take the text from the day that, that they gave me and I parse it as Eden and then I just render it 
with all the hiccup or all the re reagent stuff that already exists in, in Portal to the element that they also give you. So th th this is essentially all you have to do is like you, you get a string, it's presumably eaten, you parse it, and then you can do stuff with it. Uh, here, I'm just rendering to the DOM uh, this app thing, which is just doing some portal specific stuff, right? But it, this is not a lot of code, right? That's the nice thing here is like, I'm mostly pulling in stuff that already existed in the portal UI source code, and I'm just gluing it together. Um, and then it like, well, what's really nice here is that any bugs I fix in like the mainline portal automatically like propagate here. Like this was a very easy integration. I did have to like, um, th this UX was special for notebooks, this stuff over here. So I kind of figured out how I wanted to do that to kind of take full fledged portal, which is, this is what it looks like by default, right? There's like a lot more UI to it. And I'm like, you don't want to see this again and again and again and again for every result. You don't want to see this guy and this guy. So uh, trimming that down was a little bit of work. But other than that, it's just been like, yeah, just dump every viewer in here. And uh, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of hoping that. Stuff. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that because it's so easy, where you're just yeah. getting Eden, and you're supposed to return HTML, right? Um, no, no, no. I mean, no. and, you... well, not even like you're just an element, right? Uh, an yeah, right HTML here, HTML element, right? Element. Yeah. Um, so like, most of the tooling um, for other notebook kinds are already based on that, right? Where they get like some kind of closure data, which is usually like something Eden style um, and they produce some kind of JavaScript -y whatever craziness. Um, and now they can just like hook into this as well, where it's like, they don't, they need to write like, what is this like 44 lines of code, um, which is mostly like boilerplate copy paste stuff. And they can integrate it with it. Uh, those like perfectly, probably not, right? Like you said, you didn't, you did some special stuff to not, not have the same output, but yeah, that's the like sugar on top, right? Um, I mean, you didn't have to do that. It would have like, initially when I came to you and said, can we have the portal viewers in there? I was completely fine with like having the actual full portal integration in there. And um, that would already have been great. Um, doing some extra stuff to have like, a slimmed down UI is really uh, just like extra. Yeah, uh, th there's one more bit, which took me a little bit to figure out, which is that, so I, I use Shadow Seal JS to build that main JS that you saw here, right? When I said, hey, use this main.js. So, so to build that, I use Shadow and you just need to do target ESM. So like, I guess the other bit is the Shadow build, which is like encapsulated right here, so. But once you yeah, put those two things sense. together. Your actual, your other, uh, the, your actual uh, portal extension in, uh, is built a different way, right? You're building it as a no NPM module, uh, NPM library. Yeah, think, right here, target right? no library. Yeah. So I have yeah. two. I have two things I'm building with Shadow for that one extension. Mm -hmm. I have the this thing, which is for the main UI, and this thing for the notebook UI stuff. Yeah. But yeah, target that's, ESM. That's is... just VS Code craziness, uh, yeah. or. Even yeah. worse, JavaScript build craziness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I got all my hair, basically. By the way, we have about 20 minutes to mm -hmm. the official time. And maybe some people may wish to join later and chat further, just to let you know. Maybe some people may need to leave. And uh, I think it would be good to spend a little more time with the implementation because there are a few parts here where, mm -hmm. you know, which are a bit specialized. Uh, it is, what, I guess one part of this is just how to write a VS Code extension, right? Another part is how to communicate with Calva notebooks. And another one is how to use Portal as a UI library in a way, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I and then, you know, I see you use reagent and then I'm wondering which one of these is actually responsible for the choice of reagent, which one of these is actually responsible for uh, mount mounting the DOM. So many parts are involved and uh, would you like to talk about it a little bit to draw a map uh, if, if you could. 
yeah yeah i can get yeah. so to like clarify right at the the yeah um from the vs code side right there is well so i don't know how um, it was it was an advantageous position it, uh, the portal was in because it already had a vs code extension right it made this much easier if i had to start by building an extension first it would have been a little bit harder <laughs> but so building an extension right there's like a ton of stuff online but um uh you like have this package json and it specifies like all this stuff the like main thing you need is this vs code thing uh because you'll you're like able to pull in their apis through that um but then other than that it's mostly just like specifying um stuff that you want vs code to do for you so one of those things right is what this extension will contribute to vs code and there's this like no, this uh, notebook render and then but the thing is you, you like have to give a javascript as like an entry point which is where which is why i started talking about shadow uh be, because you have to like build that uh javascript and the specific format that they want is um, called ESM, which I can't remember what it's, ECMAScript modules, I think is what it is. Mm -hmm. So once you connect that dot of like, hey, VS Code, here's a notebook render, here's the mime type I support. Then we go into Shadowland, which says, okay, to build that ESM module, right, here's the namespace right here, uh, portal ex extensions, VS Code notebook. So here's, so then, then we go into there, right? So if we like thread the needle, uh, we like go there. So if I understand correctly, so far we haven't assumed anything about Calva notebooks. It yep. was just a general well, VS Code notebook thing, right? You exactly. assumed one tiny little bit um, where you said X application Eden, um, which I think that's not actually a thing. Uh, that's what we both like agreed to like call the data type, uh, the MIME type, right? Uh, coming out of Calva notebooks. And that's actually all there is to the um, basically thing that you need to agree initially. There's Calva produces this X application Eden MIME type and is saying, well, I need a renderer for this thing and whoever wants to do it, um, I don't care. You, uh, it's all up to you. And anybody else in your VS code uh, can say, well, I've got like a renderer for this thing um, and please give me the data, I'm gonna do the thing. And Chris was like the first one who said, well, I've got a thing that can render Eden. And um, that's basically all he had to do uh, to like get the data. And I'm getting back basically his, well, I'm not even like getting it back. It's like at this point, VS Code is doing all of it. Um, and it's just displaying the thing that uh, Chris is saying to display in those cells. Peter. Oh, you're, uh, you're muted. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, so does this mean that if, if uh, the Calva notebook with, would um, provide uh, another MIME type, say JSON, then it would open up uh, another world of uh, implementat implementers of, of viewers as well? Yeah. Yeah, so like, there's already a bunch of uh, renderers included, like the ones that were that I showed initially, like the HTML and uh, the the Markdown viewer and like the text viewer. Like there's a few of them already, and all I had to do, like to get these displayed, is to say, well, this I've also got this data and these types. Um, so I'm mm. actually like when you run one of these cells, I'm taking the result of nrepl and saying, well. Um, this thing is now like in four different types of MIME types. I'm doing a little bit like to have them differently, like I'm doubling the new lines to display them as uh, a hiccup and whatever. Um, but like that doesn't really make any like big difference. In the end, I'm just taking the NREPL data and saying, well, I need viewers for these different, different kinds of um, MIME types. And if they exist, they're going to like show up. And if I don't have them installed, they won't even like show up in the um, in the drop down when you select like what you want to render the thing as. Which is really nice. Like if anybody can write a viewer for this and doesn't really need to talk to us. Um, like yeah, sure. Like it's nice if they tell us that the new viewer exists for the thing, but 
like you can just do this um, without any input from us. Um, and there's like a bunch of examples, like they're usually in TypeScript uh, because like, well, VS Code. Um, but as you've seen the uh, example of portal using it is super tiny and is in Clojure script. So if you wanna like look into that one um, and steal that code, I'm guessing Chris doesn't mind. Yeah, um, but um, as Daniel said, we do have like a few caveats. Um, is that how you pronounce that? I only ever read that word. Um, <laughs> um, with the integration in the portal, right? Um, or like into anything. Um, Cause like we said, I'm just giving you the Eden that's coming out of NREPL and telling you, well, please like, render this in some kind of fashion. And you're now saying, well, cool, this is what I want to render it as. You, but usually Portal has like even deeper stuff where you can call back from the value into your JVM and like ask extra stuff um, and run functions on it and um, display it in a different way or like have atoms connected to like live atoms in your JVM and whatever. And we can't do this because and I'm also just uh, there's a question there, if I may. Uh, what, yeah, sure. That thing you mentioned there is if we send the data from NREPL over to to Chris, uh, and and then Chris wants to dive deeper uh, in, in in into it, uh, how does that work? I mean, if if it's if it's a deep data structure, maybe you don't want to. I'm sending the whole thing. That's one other thing that yeah. uh, you've got a problem mm -hmm. with. Like usually, Portal is really, really smart around um, loading big data um, and lazy data and whatever, and not just transferring all of it or at least not showing all of it. Um, and in here, we don't have that luxury. I just have to like give you the whole Eden thing. Um, and I also have to say, tell all the pretty printers to like not cut off the data. Um, cause then like, I'm gonna get like munched, uh, stuff and you can't even show that. Right. Um, so I need to like, do you think there is a way, is there a way to, to give also some kind of callback? I mean, to, uh, to That's... whoever renders this, that you can call this to get more mm -hmm. of this or something like that. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. That's like right now it's not possible, like it would in theory, mm -hmm. but um, we've got a different idea kind of Chris and I, um, how we can get a richer context going um, and also make it accessible to everybody uh, again. Cause like, I like Chris, but I don't want to work with just his stuff, right? Um, it would be nice if a clerk could get their viewers in there and like right now it's working. Um, but if we did some, portal specific stuff, they would like have to adhere to the same standards, which would be annoying, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we wanna like work with anything kind of, um, but we also wanna give them a connection back into the JVM, right? Because uh, portal can do way more stuff if it's actually also running alongside your code. Um, yeah. It can like, like, like all the atoms and stuff. Yeah, but also like data find nav, like so portal will support that you can implement like your own data file in your own nav, but it's on objects and, or, it, or it's like you have a function on like in a map, but those things, when you serialize them as Eden, you lose all the in-memory stuff. So anything that's based off of having an in-memory reference in a live runtime, anything like that, it will, doesn't currently work. Yeah, and we've got kind of an idea of how to get it to work. Um, which was like also the discussion we wanted to have like uh, at the, either after or we can have like it like for the last 10 minutes um, or run long, whatever, um, where it's like, how can we get the data to like be more connected to the thing where it's coming from, right? So usually it's the JVM, but I mean, it could be a closure script environment, um, which would make it even crazier, but whatever. And the thing that, Chris and I came up with after like having a long discussion of like who's supposed to do it and whatever. Um, like we had a few different ideas, but in the end um, we thought it m kind of makes sense if the library displaying the thing is kind of responsible for printing the thing because then it can 
print whatever it wants, uh, like only parts of the data or more data, or it can even send execution stuff along with it, right? Soldiers has the nice thing that like the execution of the thing just looks like Eden, right? Um, so Chris could send function calls basically uh, to the cell instead of sending the data. Um, so our idea is um, that we have like a tiny hook in Kava where you can say, well, um, I want to be like enable portal or enable whatever. And then we're going to like look either like put the portal extension into the depths even ourselves. So like say the user has to do it like they're smart enough um, themselves, whatever. Like we can go a little bit hacky for version one, right? And instead of running the eval through the normal eval of nrepl we're gonna run it through the, uh, the through that but give it a different print function because usually we give it like pretty print or like normal print or whatever like if we have like a few different ones we can give it but we can now give it the portal print function that chris is gonna write um and, and specifically just for this notebook environment and Chris can now send special stuff along with the actual stuff because he knows that the value is gonna arrive at his own viewer, right? And it's not gonna arrive at like some normal Eden viewer, like on whatever that like doesn't understand what he's sending along. He just he doesn't even have to send like the actual value. It can just send like for example a port that the um that the viewer has to connect through back with web sockets like he usually does or whatever. Um, yeah. Chris, any uh, further comment on that one? No, no, I think I think it's still like in the planning phases. But the the idea, right, is that um, the the notebook environment isn't as rich yet, but we plan to hopefully make it better. Uh, and by treating it as like a printing problem is one potential solution. Uh, because then other implementations will, that can, um, like like maybe a clerk wants to bring their viewers, well, they can just write their own print function and serialize the data however they want. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, we have a few minutes to the official time and those who wish to stay are invited to stay longer. Uh, are there any questions uh, from th those who maybe haven't asked? Um, um not not just about implementation you know user questions user wishes or requests uh, uh, could be wonderful at this stage um oh yeah ben i was just wondering like you chris you're saying about like writing your own custom like extensions to portal or viewer extensions i guess was the term you used um could you do like write something for something like GNU plot, for example? Um, wait, when you say that, you mean like... Um... I think he means his own viewers, right? Yeah, yeah but like, I used a... to, like you have like a string that represents the syntax you would pass to GNU plot, and then to render it, you call, like, I guess, it, yeah. So with Portal, you can provide, um, in this, this, this doesn't work in, in notebooks, right? But yeah, you can provide, your own like viewers and they're just reagent functions that take in data and render however they want. Um, oh, cool. So the issue is that they would all be client side. So if you have to shell out to something or you have to embed a library to take the, cause the right GNU plot is like the special syntax. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so getting that would, would be a bit harder, um, but it, it definitely could work. But it should also like, the nice thing about portal is that, like unless we're in like in the, the notebook environment and hopefully it's gonna work there as well, but it can call back into the JVM, right? So in theory, you can like have a viewer that calls back into the JVM, lets the JVM run something in your shell and gets the data from that shell run yeah. uh, back into portal. Um, portal yeah. already does that a bunch itself, like uh, Chris said, for the uh, enough, uh, what's, what are they called, the navigation things in JVM? Uh, yeah, you, you can register a var as like a command. So that's what I'm thinking. I have, this is Selene's documentation, which I'm working on currently. Uh, but yeah, you could register like a var as like a command. And then your extension in the UI could execute that 
Uh, and the reason why you'd want it as a command is so that people could then do that for arbitrary data. And I'm assuming you'd have a string in hand and you'd pass it to this function. It would shell out like Lucas was saying to this thing and it would give you binary data. I don't know, GNU plot, I'm assuming serialized just to SVG or a PNG or something. And then you would ship that back to the UI and the UI could then render it um, as SVG or as a PNG. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, maybe uh, another question, Chris. Uh, I think, you know, I, I'm thinking about really, really possibly using it for study sessions and workshops. And, and then there are two things we could hope for. One of them is being able to render a whole notebook as an HTML page, you know, to show it uh, in a blog post or, or something. Mm -hmm. Another thing is to somehow make it accessible to people who use maybe Emacs with CIDR, say, right? And I think, you know, what you just demonstrated is that Portal can be used as a UI library that can, you know, show its component in an HTML page, basically, right? So we could hope for all that and maybe Maybe it is not so difficult. And you know, maybe that is something that uh, maybe I could take as an exercise, uh, just learning how to, to embed a portal component in an HTML page and then play with the idea of creating something that tries to be similar for those who cannot live inside this code. Right? Chris, Does it didn't make sense? you uh, say that you also were trying to get a portal to show up in Clerk? Yeah, so I think that might be along the lines of maybe what you want, Daniel. Um, uh, so it is different from what I am I'm asking, okay. but it is interesting as well. No, so yeah, but um, I think that the way it would have work would be the same kind of. Yeah, if if so, what I'm thinking is you would have like a JavaScript somewhere on the internet you could pull down into your web page, and it presents like an embedding API. Because then what I could do is use that within Clerk if you want to use some of the portal viewers in there you will be able to pull it in and you'd have a JavaScript API that you could use to say, render this Eden string or this JavaScript value or something, right? Kind of like how we did for the notebooks. You right, you would import this library, get this JavaScript API and say, render this here. Um, and then, so you would do a little bit of gluing, um, um, but it would be really easy to embed it anywhere, right? Whether it's in a clerk notebook or a HTML published page that you have that you just want to use some of the viewers in. Um, but yeah, giving it like an, I want to call it like an embedding API. Yeah, I think it would also be nice if we could get the uh, Calva notebooks to like produce HTML that basically like is the representation of the thing that's showing right now. Um, oh, yeah. I think on the portal side, not very much would have to change. Uh, it would be more like on the Calva side where like we need to like produce this as an HTML now. Yeah. Um, so but yeah. currently you have like in, in portal itself, you have like copy mm -hmm. JSON, copy Eden, copy. It'd be really cool, I think, to have copy HTML, which would give you like, like a, a self-contained HTML document that you could then, you know, it would be static, but you could you could paste it mm -hmm. anywhere, or you could share it, or you could do whatever you want. Um, yeah. And if we uh, have think, like that function already, we could like use that to display the whole notebook, like, to export the whole notebook as well, right? Because uh, we would call every one of your cells and say, please give me yourself as HTML. Yeah. And then we would kind so, of be done, which is nice. And so are these many HTML already works one. in uh, HTML, right? Uh, in the web. So the, like the VS Code.dev thing in theory uh, would already work. Okay. Uh, so I'm a bit confused about what you just said. Uh, I think you were talking about rendering many HTML pages, one for each uh, cell. And then- Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's many uh, HTML fragments and you put them yeah. in one page. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wonderful, yeah, yeah, thank, you. yeah. thank you. I think like for me at least, that's not like a high priority because like I'm not in the, like I don't need to save these documents, right? Because for me, I'm reusing them while I'm working on that namespace. I don't need to like have the thing as output on a web page, but I think for you guys, it would be uh, nice if you could take like a static version of the notebook that you saw and like publish that. Um, 
And in theory, all of that is already in VS Code is already HTML plus JavaScript, right? Because I mean, it's just like, that's what VS Code is. Um, so it shouldn't be too crazy to grow from that into a static HTML page, hopefully. Would it even be possible to like select different viewers for different uh, things on, on right in, now uh, in files? Uh, yeah, but then and then export that the as HTML. HTML. So, uh, HTML. So then this part would be a table. This part would be a Vega graph, and so on. You know, mm -hmm. would that be possible? You think? Probably. Uh, the, um, yeah. I mean. The, I think it wouldn't make it harder than it already is. So yeah, um, it kind of like VS Code is sometimes annoying, right? Where it's like, well, this should be super easy because it's already like there and like they can do it, but then you just don't have the API or like you have the API, but it's private or whatever. And I mean, that's one of the reasons we even start, like I even started to note the whole notebook thing is because like they just don't let me put HTML in between code lines. Um, so I needed to have like a notebook thing to be able to like put the stuff I want to put there. Yeah, by the way, we are around the official time and a couple of friends had to leave. Maybe, maybe it is a good time for those who may need to leave to say some concluding words and then we could stay a little longer, those who could stay. So any conclusion, uh, Lucas or Chris or anybody? Um, yeah, I do have to go as well, but thank you so much, everyone, for the presentation. It was really interesting. Bye. Thank you so much, Ben. Nice to see you, Ben. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, um, I can still stay, but uh, yeah, in conclusion, I would say, like, I'm super uh, happy the way this turned out uh, and that it, getting closure into notebooks was actually decently little work. Uh, because of the way closure is built and because of the way we already think about like top level um, as expressions as like their own thing. Um, and it's really nice that we can now start using all of the tooling we already use um, just inside those notebooks. Yeah, sure, there's like a little bit of weirdness around like calling back and forth and like displaying stuff differently or saving and preserving white space or whatever, but mostly it's not super crazy. And it's gonna be nice when we put some more time into it to like get all the other Calva goodness into the code cells as well. Because right now we've been mostly talking about like the output cells, right? Um, but in the end, we're still just writing code. And so the code cells should also get some uh, nice uh, sugar on top. Yeah, I'm, I'm also really excited. And I'm, I'm, I felt like it wasn't too hard getting all this working, but I feel like uh, ironing out like the UX and like like making it so that people like just want to use this all the time, I think is what I want to work towards. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, for uh, that, that, that's what I want feedback on is like, what isn't working? Cause like right now, everything that's in there is just guesses. It's just like, this kind of works for me, but you know, uh, I think if things aren't working, people should be vocal and be like, yeah, this isn't working. And here's why I'm trying to do this and this isn't working. Can you help? <laughs> and I really like that You're collaboration. You're VS Code user, right? I think you're a Linux no. user. No, yeah. uh, I, I go back and forth on Windows, which is what I'll develop on. Sometimes I'll use VS Code more often, but on like OSX, I'll use Emacs more. I don't know why. I'm weird. <laughs> mm. uh, I think it's good. Sorry, go. but yeah, it makes it like even more difficult for you to mm -hmm. like get the use case because you're not dog fooding it as much uh, yeah, as exactly. people who would actually use it. Yeah. So that brings me to to the question: like, how, how could I? What should I do to to run this stuff? To run this stuff? Because I, I want to run it. I want to test it. And we want to give you all that feedback. Uh, also, just seeing when you demoed it, Chris, I mean, the, the UX made total sense to me. So, but of course, you're an expert on it. So, yeah. so that's a, uh, maybe tainted how I was looked at it. But I, I, I like, well, think it was like genius UX. Uh, uh, especially the thing you, you did would bring like a mini portal in, in, in there in, in every cell. It, yeah, it's 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 great. So, but I, I would love to to um, yeah to actually just be be using this. 
uh, in my daily uh, daily hacking. So and then then I will probably come back with uh, a more yeah. constructive feedback. And this is awesome. Yeah. We yeah, probably I I... produced like a quick video of how to get all of this running from a naked VS Code, right? Because it's super easy, actually. You only like you install uh, VS, you install VS Code, you install Calva, you install the portal extension. I um, have all that installed. <laughs> yeah, and then you're already done, right? Because you right click any CLJ file while you have a REPL running. You're gonna get the notebook, and you can click the thing, and you get the portal things in between. Um, the nice thing, like I said as well, you don't need to have like actual execution in the middle of your thing. You can do that in rich comments, but that's also optional, right? You can put your stuff wherever you want. I'm not your mother. Um, you can write the namespaces that you want to write. Yeah, I, I'm I'm certainly on the same page as you when it comes to I, I don't I don't have executing stuff uh, at the top level of my namespaces. Um, so um, I think that yeah, I I just want to be able to evaluate any any namespace uh, uh, with confidence. So I'm totally with you there. Yeah, yeah so but you can so have the it, it's also at the bottom and get the stuff. And I'm right now trying to get some of our namespaces at work um, where the bottom rich comments are kind of documentation for the data structures. Uh, when you open the thing in a notebook in Calva, you'd get like portal displaying the data structures in a nice way. And um, you don't like, yeah, then uh, you can play around with that uh, inside of it. I didn't have like super a lot of time to play with it yet, but uh, yeah, it's already looking pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's another thing I just want to mention that that when I saw saw the like test uh, reporter stuff there and the diff views and all that, we have this uh, uh, very very nice and promising uh, like uh, test runner uh, thing in in, in Calva, but it's hard it's a bit hard for us to to maintain. I think because it it, it 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 takes a lot of effort to bring it to the like some next level so it's it's, it's it looked a bit like uh if, like similar to how i've been a bit up stressed about calva is a bit bad at handling large data structures uh, so then most often people have would have to use something else if they have that but now portal and especially with this integration like like Takes that all the way. We can not, not, now, now you can you now can you can use Calva, uh, uh, and Portal will take care of that uh, that use case uh, beautifully. It seems like we could offload some of the test uh, uh, stuff also mm -hmm. uh, to to these uh, to these viewers, and then relax a bit about uh, that part of Calva, which is a bit of a pain to think about. Mm -hmm. Right? It's yeah. um, it's a lot of great stuff there. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I kind of like the test runner itself in Calva, but the mm -hmm. output is pretty useless when you have got like two big data structures saying, "Well, this is not this," and like I don't see anything anymore. And throw it, I usually throw that into portal anyway. Um, but it would be nice if we uh, could integrate that into the notebooks in some way or whatever, um, so that you don't have to do that manually and throw like the data uh, into a uh, portal. So one of the things that I didn't cover, but there's NREPL middleware that exists in Portal that you can add. And one of the cool things it does is if you're evaluating a test form, it will capture test output for you by default and make it available with the test report viewer. Um, and all you have to do is eval. Like, I think one of the things I forget is like, what was it, what's the test command? How do, I, how do I run this test, but not that test? Uh, I, I I don't like that way of working. And the way I like working is just like going to the code for the test and just running it, like just mm -hmm. evaluating the form. The issue is that the yeah, default yeah. is like nil or true or false or something. It's like not useful. And then it pretty prints stuff, but it's like, again, sometimes it can be not useful. So uh, by having this end up on middleware, it'll capture that as data and then dump it out using tap. And if you don't like the way it looks by default, which um, some people don't, you can, you can in your tap handler, take the data that the end REPL thing produced and change it. You can say, I only care about this stuff and tap that sub data or this or that. Um, but so there's like room for customization there. But what's cool is that yeah, 
because that data conforms to the spec that I have set up for the viewer, it automatically just shows up with that viewer um, in, in Portal when you just tap the data. So, uh, but yeah, I think the hard part is just getting everything set up <laughs> and working. Mm. So. Yeah, but that's nice about the notebook thing. Uh, I think that yeah. like, there's basically no setup. Like you install two extensions, you already had to install one anyway. Um, and then you right click on a file. So you don't even write mm -hmm. a special file. It just says, yeah. if you can get the REPL running in Calva, you're kind of done already and can use all this stuff. And we can now make it better by like making you install like the dependency or whatever. Um, but even just like installing two extensions already gives you 90% of the stuff. Yeah. So I had an, another thing I start to think of uh, when you two people uh, speak here is that you know the, the Calva output window slash REPL, this is both, that is just a regular uh, text file, just regular VS Code document uh, that we take some control of to print a prompt or something like that. It's, 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 it's just a fake prompt in a sense, in a sense I don't know. but. Would it actually be possible to turn that into a, uh, into a notebook, maybe, uh, and have like portal uh, powered uh, output, right, as our output mm -hmm. window? Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, like, I mean, right now we're just like you said, we are just using a special file, right, and opening it in a yeah, kind I mean, of special just, way. It, um, but notebooks mm -hmm. are the same, where you're basically saying, well, I want to like understand this file and please open it in this notebook. And our Calva thing already has like a special extension, I think, um, like dot Calva or something. Um, yeah, that Calva REPL, I think I, I call it. Yeah, but me, like I should just probably try to open that as a notebook and see what happens, right? It's uh, it, uh, Yeah, that wouldn't work because you need to like, uh, you would have to change a tiny line in the project JSON and um, where we say which kind of files we understand for this notebook. Is it extension? Because it isn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, it's in Calva. Uh, it's extension. Product JSON. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah, you say, I, I it, understand. It, we would CSV set it as a closure file because it, it is registered mm -hmm. as a closure file. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that doesn't, uh, yeah. But like, it's just mm -hmm. one line of thing to change that we can actually show that as a notebook. Um, what happens after that? I'm not sure, uh, but <laughs> no, the uh, file don't. itself is just normal closure, right? So it Wait, should work. Are you saying render the output window as a notebook? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. That was what I was starting to think. Yeah. Gotcha. And okay, then if you do, cool. do that and you have like a, uh, a portal mm -hmm. a viewer uh, yeah. for the stuff there, then we could actually render it. Uh, in, yeah. Yeah. That could maybe and work. I think, yeah, we would yeah. like, Probably it would make sense to have like a second notebook implementation um, that acts a little bit differently where you don't see the thing as code, right? You just see the outputs. Um, and uh, because like you're not interested in the code bits maybe. Well, it, I mean, it would be interesting because we have a setting where you can say in the REPL also show me what produced this output, right? Because uh, yes. usually we just mm -hmm. print the output. Um, but we can, yeah. could say for the, this notebook thing, just give it both. And now you would have an actual notebook of your outputs, which would be nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this would be cool. Yeah. I'm behind this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, it's super, super mind blowing stuff, everything. So mm. it's, uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm just looking forward to to mm -hmm. seeing this like presented in in, in some on some larger scene, right? Like where, where uh, because the workflow. I'm not a data scientist. I'm guessing like data scientists are more used to this kind of workflow, uh, but as like a developer workflow, it 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 is like totally, yeah, out of this world for me. It's uh. At the same time, as it is like super ex exciting stuff, it also looks very easy to use, like even easier than uh, than a regular closure file is. Mm. So it's um, yeah, it's it's a very nice uh, combination. Yeah, I think for beginners, yeah, it's actually easier than learning the keyboard shortcuts they need to learn mm. for like uh, sending stuff to the yeah, repo and whatever. 
Yeah, we still have like a bunch of beginners who like start typing in the REPL window and whatever, which like, yeah, sure, you can do that, but like that's not the way you want to make people do it. And it would be nice if, if the first thing they see is like actually a, a notebook buttons, yeah. where it's play buttons. You're not supposed to take mm -hmm. the thing and paste it into the REPL. You're supposed to like write your code and execute the code and send it to the REPL, right? And the mm -hmm. notebooks kind of encourage you to do that more. A little idea, maybe it makes sense to finish the recorded part in a moment, just because, you know, after the recording, something beautiful may happen. Sometimes it happens. So does anybody wish to say anything before we say goodbye to the listeners? Well, just thank you, Daniel, for organizing this. Uh, it's been really nice. Thank you so much. So amazing. And yeah, so let us say goodbye to our listeners and see you on the next times.